We are live, Lian. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi, our women. Thank you very much for joining us uh, from Get the L Hours. Us, that is Sarah and myself, Lian. We've got as a guest the wonderful uh, Dai, who is a um, Yorkshire handywoman. And she's a brilliant sister, and we would like to promote her work. Uh, Sarah? Yes, so in Get the L Out with Lesbian News Flash, we've been giving a voice and promoting uh, lesbian voices and lesbian work. And as part of this uh, project, um, we wanted to, to, to give visibility to Dai's uh, business. Uh, so it's a building business that she will tell us more about a bit later. Um, and so she's based in the UK and uh, there should be a link in the description of this video right now. If you want to check out her website and maybe see if you need her at some point. <laughs> so I will also share my screen because Dai uh, prepared a little video. Okay. Um. I think you all see my screen now, do you, Dai? Yeah, I can see that. Right. So if you want to introduce yourself and, and yeah. Oh, hi, uh, my name's Dai. Uh, I'm the Yorkshire Handywoman. And um, this is a quick uh, video about how I became uh, the Yorkshire Handywoman. Um, it's basically uh, my only natural place to go. Uh, so thank you. Um, there are pictures of you when you were younger. Yeah, I, really to highlight the fact that, you know, I was being, I, I use the term gender non-conforming because that's the term that's being used um, these days uh, with all, all the gender ideology stuff. So, and the people being hardest hit are young lesbians that need to know that, you know, this is, this is a woman, this, this is gender non-conforming because that's the language you use. But for me, this is a woman, um, plain and simple. Um, you can call me butch, you can call me gender non-conforming. I, I don't really see um, anything more than a woman, but it was important at, in these times that we use language that younger lesbians who are really being pulled into the gender ideology um, understand and then they can see that you know we actually we do make it into our uh, 50s just fine and it, it can all be good and, and you can keep this way your whole life um, it's great it's a good life yeah I think it's really important to exactly show um, show this that you know women exist outside of femininity and age completely fine without it you know <laughs> yeah so what has been your journey yeah, towards creating your own handy woman business? Like what did you do before the business? Um, so I, I was, a, 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 I, I came out of the womb thinking, as this suggests, I was a truck driver because boys couldn't do anything better than I can do it. Um, that was how I came out of the womb. It, it, when it came uh, to uh, playing football, um, I, I wanted to play football too. and play better than them um so I've, I've worked in uh careers surrounded by men um as a woman who isn't representing what they expect a woman to represent um which sometimes um uh, you know meant that you stood out a bit more and got a bit more flack but if you it my preference personally would be that i worked in a male environment um and well represented uh, women that didn't conform with femininity because actually that was good for them, you know, to, to see us uh, as people and equals, um, but always be better than boys, basically. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a mantra all the way through. <laughs> um, 
But while I was doing that, that wasn't enough for me. I love being out on the road because um, you see all sorts of sights um, and I love wildlife and nature. Um, so being a truck driver meant I could see over the hedges, I could see the deer, I could see the hares laying in the field, like everything there is. Uh, I love raptors and owls, so I got to see them. Um, but I needed something creative. Um, from a young age, I've needed to use my hands. Um, you know, I, I, I express myself best when I use my hands. And so I create things. Um, and uh, after being a truck driver, I had an accident. Um, and uh, th that meant I kind of had to rethink. I, I was told basically, um, you know, you're permanently disabled. Um, we're going to give you counselling to get used to um, not being able to do stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's it for you, kind of sit down. Um, but I'm, I'm a Yorkshire handywoman and I'm from Yorkshire and we don't often sit down. Um, you know, we, we, if you tell me I can't do something, I'll prove you completely wrong that I can do it and I can do it better than you expect. Um, so I, that to me was like, um, uh, you know, it, I, had to, I had to beat the odds and I needed a project um, that would give me the exercise um, to be able to beat the odds. And so um, when I, I got, come after a couple of years where I was rehabilitating through help, um, I got a payout and then could buy land. And that was then my rehabilitation. I kept my leg. They were talking about uh, chopping it off, but I wasn't having, I, you know, I, I wanted to beat the odds. So um, this this is how I did it. I, I literally um, bought land, but uh, the farmers before um, had used it for just potato crops for years, like since the mid 80s. Um, so the land uh, it had very little in the way of any uh, nutrient or structure and needed predominantly to stay fallow um, for a number of years while it recovered. Um, and uh, it went from being just horrible land to um, beautiful beautiful hay and a really good crop of it and if all the things I did which was keep my leg recover become strong again um I also repaired the land at the same time as repairing myself which um you know that that was awesome as a nature and, and wildlife lover so wow um, amazing it also it taught me a lot um more about just what I was capable of um you know you you live in a safe environment for so long where you do work for the man. Um, and then you realize actually, uh, there's a reason you kicked off and got to do woodwork and metal work um, as, as a kid at school. That's because this was where you were meant to end up, where you could show, you know, look, that's the finished article of the farm um, from an empty field with a, a, a car parked in the entrance to, something that people were giving um, people a guided tour of this land when I was selling up was one of the, um, that was a gift. That, you know, that was a gift. It was amazing because I just had this vision of what I would like to visit if I was going to a farm and created that and thought about um, the ergonomics and like the chickens lived in a European chicken uh, rotation system. Um, you know, they had lavender sprigs in their nesting boxes, dust free sawdust. Um, you know, they, they lived in the Paris Hilton kind of thing. Like, you know, it was they, they lived in luxury. They were looked after. Um, same with the pigs. Um, but, you know, it's funny. Uh, I'm an ex pig and, and chicken farmer and, and set up a catering business. Um, I'm now a vegan. Um, so, no. <laughs> Probably um, doing this uh, actually is why it was so easy to transfer to vegan. Because um, I, you know, I held some chickens while they died. Um, I got my pigs drunk on grapes, um, which was hilarious. And they loved having their stomachs rubbed. Um, you know, it was, 
but I, at the end of it, the, the point of it was to build a business. It was to create something that someone would come and pay me much more than I'd paid for it um, and buy into the vision that, you know, was created by by everything around them. And, and that happened. And I could walk away with a profit from that and then uh, went into property development. Um, which it really doing up the catering trailer was incredible incredible because that that was like I absolutely gutted what I bought and rebuilt it and and Matt told me I could fit a kitchen um like much smaller scale but you know I can fit a kitchen why can't I fit a kitchen I fit everything in here and created a space that worked ergonomically um for running a catering business from so um that, that made, kind of this um kind yeah of I bought the trailer, yeah. um, but the um, the floor in it was quite rotten, so I had to completely rip that out. In ripping that out, I then had to rip out a whole load of other stuff. Well, everything else. <laughs> um, but the um, griddle needed a new uh, top, so I had that remade. They hadn't uh, they hadn't repaired a leak in the roof, but uh, I got up on the roof as well and repaired the leaks, um, repaired everything, refitted the electrics and and the gas, um, and created a, a fast food business where. Um, the, the the difficulty in buying land and cre creating a business is that you you have to, you only have a small space and to make money you need a much bigger space so you have to think differently about how you sell your pigs and your chickens like you can't if, if you if you're gonna sell half a, half a pig you, you're gonna make whatever the, the best price for that is right now whereas if you sell it by the sausage and a slice of bacon out of a hot hot food place that uh, is on the side of a busy road within half a mile of the farm um people buy into it and as long as you're consistently good um it's a business mm. um, and and that's the same same ethos as being a handy woman where i've ended up now through um doing that and then doing uh home renovations and taking some of what i'd learned um at the farm in acres into a house um, which ultimately um, was easier because it was a much smaller space. Uh, you know, 13 acres is what the farm was and that all needed to be managed. Even when it was being left fallow, there were certain things that needed uh, to be insured happened um, to make sure it came back to its best. So, so tell us what, what you do in, uh, in your current business, the, the Yorkshire Handy Woman. Um, so the... The business itself is is really I'm a woman who works for women. Um, it's predominantly I've I've had maybe one or two inquiries from from blokes, um, but it's uh, I basically do what needs doing. So anything from a bit of plastering or uh, building a deck outside or doing your garden for you, um, you get in touch. Um, we have a chat and and we can work it out. I have some customers that I go to monthly because um, that works for how their budget works. Um, but the important thing is that I, whatever you need doing it, I, I can likely do it. Um, you know, I, that it's it pays to get in touch. And what, what I've found is that um, there are women out there also that want to know how to use these tools themselves. So not only will I do the work for you, um, I'll also, um, if you're if you're wanting to, teach you how to do the work, um, which is it is about what it is for me. It's empowering women. There's been times in my life um, where I just haven't wanted a bloke around, and it, it it's irritated me uh, massively. But the only people that I can get hold of are men uh, to come and do jobs um, that really um, you, you don't need a penis to do it. Um, you know, it's that simple. Um, you, you just need to be able to say, I can do that. Um, I mean, and do it. I mean, the problem is that, uh, you know, when men, uh, they, they make it extra complicated for women to look at 
and then think, oh my God, I can't do this. You know, it, it looks so complicated and it's absolutely fucking not. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's that's part of it as well. I, I've had um, discussions with women who are like, I can't use power tools. And I, I've just said to them, well, who says you can't use power tools? Because like you can, like you just need to be shown how to use the power tools and then you can use them. Like, you know, it's great today in a way because anything you want to learn to do, you go on the internet, you know, you have a look and you'll find a way. Um, someone will be quite happy to produce a video to tell you um, how you can do certain things. Um, you know, you need to decide what you're comfortable with. That's the thing. If you, if you want, um, if it, having a bit of guidance isn't a bad thing I I grew up watching what my dad did when he did odd jobs you know at, at that age it wasn't my brother who who walked around watching what my dad was doing fixing a car or um you know doing odd jobs around the house or painting and decorating it was me um you know I've always had a keen interest in in being able to do stuff for myself I don't know if that's uh, particularly a lesbian thing or it's a die thing but I have found that you know there's an extraordinary number of very capable um, lesbians out there who can get on with a job um, you know it's it's it is a, a great gift to us if you like um, but we want to do those things. I felt really sorry for um, women who are more easily influenced by men um, more easily made to feel um, that they're not capable or um, almost that they shouldn't even bother trying. Of course, you know, women should all be empowered. And that's part of it. You know, it's like the majority of women. I have, I have women ring me up or email me that are with a bloke. They're, they're married to a bloke, live with a bloke. They just don't want blokes coming in their house, making them feel uncomfortable. They would much rather have a woman come and do it and there's so many capable women um you know it's a shame that there aren't more of us out there like when mm. I was doing the property development um it was really I wanted I, I had to learn to plaster because I didn't want to pay a man to plaster it, it became that simple like in the end you know I I had to accept some help but you know, I, I wanted to have a woman come and plaster. And, and you know, there just wasn't. So, I mean, it's not just that I want to be able to do it. It would be really good if we could establish a network, you know, because I, I get asked for work um, in places I just can't go to. I, not easily, just, on you know, at the drop of a hat, which is usually what these jobs entail. But it would be really handy if women could, you know, kind of get in touch and say, um why how about we start a list we start sharing contacts you know one of us might be better at marketing uh, one of us might be better at this but we can create that network um and we should yeah so if there are any uh women out there who are listening now or maybe listening later please get in contact with uh the uh, die and she uh yeah she is really keen on you know organizing a network with uh other women who have an interest in doing you know handiwork if it's gardening plastering electric anything like that it would be really great to have a network yeah we need it and what you were saying earlier, like, I don't know if it's a lesbian thing or a die thing. I, I really, I definitely think it's part of the lesbian culture, you know, this independence with the, with the tools and this, um, ab, a, this capacity to do things ourselves and to learn ourselves. And that's also why I think it's uh, brilliant uh, that you are so keen on uh, teaching other women you know how to use those tools and everything and um, I also think it's, it, it's really what makes the difference between you as a like as a handy woman and uh, a man who would do this job because men they do everything they can to keep the knowledge uh, out like to themselves the, the little bit they have 
<laughs> yeah, they want the women to clean up or hold the tools or pass something on what they need. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but I mean, it, it, that, that's, that's, to my mind, like being a woman um, and having the skills and the knowledge is, yeah, I might do myself out of some business, if you like. But actually, um, it will do me the world of good. And that's the difference between a woman in business and a bloke in business as well. Like um, when I when I was building the farm, I was hoping that I'd get to the point where I'd be able to actually have like a harvest meal um, and have a load of people come who just needed the opportunity to get together and sit around a table and chat with other people maybe had a difficult life or a difficult year or a difficult you know bereavement or you know and and, and somewhere to go to um i think women tend to be much more um community driven and i'm part of the female community i'm not just a female i'm a female activist i'm a female lesbian activist who cares about what's going to happen and what's going to be left for the next generation and if my part of my business also works towards that end in giving women the skills um, not to be holding to this secret handshake club of maildom uh, that suggests that these, these uh, skills are only in the hands of men and women are only capable of passing a screwdriver or a screw or something, um, it's, you know, that all the better all the better reason you know I'm getting on a bit as well you know I need to stop this at some point and um I don't know when that day is going to come but it'd be nice to think that there are younger uh women who are going to give this a go um you know the work's out there if if you've got the belief in yourself and the skills my my biggest please don't live next door um that's that's a big please not too close but get out there do it um you know and and help you know there's a lot of women out there like I say it was me once I didn't want blokes in my house didn't want them in the, I didn't want it just me and a bloke no way no thank you not someone I didn't know um and some people you just get a bit of a feeling about them don't you um mm, yeah but you're at the mercy of them you know if you live in a council house or something like you know you you're at the mercy of whoever the council send which you still are, you know, to a certain extent, but now we can offer some choice. And and one of the great, the, do you know, the, the day I launched, I was uh, contacted by a local women's aide um, who were desperately seeking a female handy woman uh, to come and do their jobs. And, and, you know, that in itself, I went up to the women's centre and helped them out with some plumbing, you know, just being able to do these little things to actually help you know, I'm a feminist for all women, even the ones that don't like me. I don't care. Um, I'm going to fight for you anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, you said, I think you've said a lot of things already about, you know, being in male dominated jobs, but like, do you have more to say about your experiences, like, with? as a woman and also as a lesbian uh, working with these guys like yeah in the, in kind of their own spaces let's say <laughs> yeah uh, to be honest in a lot of ways it was a lot easier um there there was you know there, there were some blokes that um just couldn't hide their um utter homophobia and uh you know I, it's one of those subjects where actually like i i struggle to get too talkative about it because um being a, being a lesbian and um you know the, you don't really you don't have to look too hard at us to know we're lesbians um we stand out quite a few of us and you know that can be hard but it can also be easier because like in terms of I, I work working as a truck driver um I was good at the job and I held my own they were my coping skills when people took the mickey out of me I took the mickey back you know I'm not having it you know I don't I'm not having it where somebody's going to make me feel 
intimidated, um, particularly as a driver, um, because I love driving. So, you know, I've had enough of people who want to knock, 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 knock. Like life's about building people up. And, and you know, like when you get someone knocking at you, you just have to stand up to them. And that with blokes, that's actually a lot easier because they kind of it ripples off them and they get the message and move on. Sometimes um, with women, the ripples can last a bit longer. I didn't work well um, in, in a call centre, for example, in that kind of enclosed environment. Um, and but, I, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, I, most blokes will go, OK, well, she's a lesbian. It's fine. Um, some don't. Uh, but that's the same everywhere, isn't it? You know, I've, yeah. I've had. I've been punched walking around the corner of a theatre and I've had a stone thrown at my forehead um, in a well-known seaside town in the UK that, you know, apparently was uh, so LGB friendly back in the day. But still people, they're threatened by difference. And what I've found as I've got older and stronger um, you know, is that people are threatened by strong women and lesbians quite often are strong women. Um, because they have to be you know you, you kind of have to you, you go against everything and and you know in in terms of like the patriarchy as such you know you're the most hated aren't you yeah um, absolutely, yeah, you, you're absolutely you are the, everything you are the most so. autonomous and free from men and all their bullshit basically <laughs> yeah like they they can't you know they can't charm us like we're, we're uncharmable um it, so in that in that sense we just have to make ourselves as unflappable as we can and stand our ground um you know truth be known um you know i've got a glass jaw if you punch me i'm going out there's no two ways about it like we've got to get close enough to do that mm -hmm. like and and i'm not going to let you because i'm not going to be scared I'm not going to. I'll stand there with my shoulders back and just say, no, like I'm a woman. Yeah. But don't think that means like I'm I'm scared. I'm not scared anymore. I have been scared. So I understand what it is to be scared as a woman, but I won't let myself be that anymore. And maybe that comes with like just too many idiots out on the streets making you you know, I, there was a time I walked around and held my head down, but I won't anymore. Yeah. So, sorry, went went off a bit there. <laughs> no, thank you very much for the insight. For the lesbian pride. Yeah, I think uh, we have, um, we both have some similar experiences because we are the same age group. Yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, I just remembered when you were saying uh, that you were uh, learning from you know from your dad who was doing some some stuff around the house. Uh, I actually learned from my mum. Uh, I grew up uh, um, in a estate. Uh, my mum uh, was, I think, uh, one of the few women at the time was divorced with four children and we were doing you know like wallpapering and things like that because I'm the oldest when the others were in bed <laughs> in wow. the we were doing this kind of work so I actually learned quite a few things from my mom <laughs> and then obviously later on from other women but um, yeah mainly from my mom you know like to be tidy you know and things like that yeah. Yeah, and you're not finished until you've cleaned up. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> part of the job. You've got to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're not done. Okay, sorry, sorry, Sarah. I mean, unless you want it to be done, but uh, we are not. <laughs> okay, okay. You go, go, so go ahead. Why, what makes you happy like doing this business? Uh, the handy the Yorkshire handy woman. Like yeah. Um, well, I mean, like I said, I, I like working with my hands. Um, that's that's uh, the, the, the hours pass for me when I'm on a project. So I like doing projects. Um, I like um, 
creating something like uh, from my head into something. I don't always have to draw it. I can just uh, do it. So it's for me, it's really good. The v variety works really well for me as well. Um, you know, I, I, I had a job once where I just did the same thing all day for like eight or nine hours a day. Um, and it really was um, hard. That was the hardest job I ever did. Um, so, so being busy, but probably just knowing is it, I know it sounds, I'm helping women, like who can't feel good when everything they do in a, a bid to get out there and, and do stuff is to help women. Like I say, blokes have got in touch with me, but thankfully so far they've been out of my area or, you know, uh, I can I can keep ducking. I'm, I'm not here to work for blokes. Um, I'm here to work for women. Um, so that makes me happy. And also, like I said, like passing on the skills and the knowledge so that women can tackle the jobs for themselves. You know, that's, yes, I do myself out of a business, but no, I don't because you know, why would you not want to help someone um, be able to do something that felt beyond them before? It's great. I... Yeah. So. so about that, like, uh, what advice would you give to women of any age, I would say, like, who would want to do something similar, uh, like have their own handy woman's business and, you know? Yeah, I, I'm go for it go for it because the demand is there um you know this is but but almost every time you go on a handy a handy person site you find a bloke it's it's a bloke and the first thing they do when they walk on a job is they rub their chin they take a deep breath in and then tell you it's going to cost you um <laughs> you know and it's a routine that's just done um I, I need to make a living. If you women don't have uh, always the biggest budgets, and and doing it this way, being an independent woman running a business, helping women, I can help them be able to afford it. Like I, I said, it, I I also have people I work for on a monthly basis because they can only afford a little bit at a time, and and that's absolutely fine. It works for me. Um, but if you've got the skills, you've got the knowledge and you feel very much that you're prepared to put yourself out there and give it a go, I would say do it because we're needed. We're valuable. You know, we're, we're it's worth the effort. And the women are so pleased to see you, um, you know, which. Why would you not like that on your daily job? Why would you not like happy women like seeing you and, you know doing a good job for them and, and making them feel good about themselves. It's a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the final question, uh, what has the lesbian and or feminist up to you, like community has brought to you either for your business or your, just on your, in your life, you know, personal level? Um, no, obviously um, I'm on here right now so cheers for that it's really handy <laughs> thank you um i i've had a lot of shares i've had a lot of um people pleased to see me um out there um it's not always uh i've, I've backed away a little bit from feminism uh, at the minute um just because i I find it I find this whole situation we're in sometimes you just have to step back hey and and just let it all kind of, like what happened in New Zealand I don't know what I was looking at I can't I can't believe um that's where we're at that's mm -hmm. that's okay that's acceptable that a decision was made and that was okay um you know women just wanted to go and talk like I've spoken at, at one of um, the Standing for Women rallies. Like I got, I got basically some uh, young lad telling me I was uh, uh, using my experience politically is a polite way of framing it. Um, 
and I, I just find at the minute the craziness um, just a bit too bad for my mental health. So I'm having a slight uh, step away from Twitter, especially. I, I don't get it. It's too yes. much. Yeah, it's sometimes too much. it's it's just uh, good to step, step away for a bit but, and reflect. Yes. I, well, I went to a million women rise um, down in London. And oh my God, the vibe there, um, the sisterhood, the energy. It, it was like, you know, when you just need to be refreshed and renewed and have your batteries charged because you've plugged right back into the sisterhood and all is good and well with the world. That was beautiful and much needed um, because, it, you know, the madness of, of all this and and. To be, you know, why do we even have to say lesbians don't have penises? That's ridiculous. Why are we even like all we've got is the same old BS um, with uh, a wig, um, some lipstick and a dress. And, you know, quite frankly, sometimes you just have to go, well, I can't take any more. But, uh, you know, I'll be back. I can't help myself. It's mm -hmm. my fight. I've got I've got daughters. Um, you know, I've got females that I love and family members that don't deserve this. And we have to be seen. We have to be heard. And, and you know, that's why I, I came on, because, you know, I, I, I want I want women to to be them. I don't want especially young lesbians um, to be thinking that there is anything at all wrong with being a young lesbian really like it does my head in that you know we, we have to say stuff out loud right now that yeah. we shouldn't even be talking about yeah that's why it's so, so important um to have lesbian visibility everywhere where we are but it's okay the way we look like it's okay you know we are lesbians so we are proud to be lesbians yeah, yeah. and most of them people say oh you know it's like i <clears throat> love your hair or you know everything's really positive about just being yourself and being out there it's it's you know that the 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 threat is is you know i was i'm it, like i say new zealand i think has knocked me for six just seeing that level of hatred and and that you know when you think about it that that was a a, a straight woman like that level of hatred so um it's it's yeah. hard seeing that and not having it break your heart mm. because it's the utter homophobia um yeah. and and misogyny is you can feel it it's, it you, you watch the footage and it's all you can see it's horrible it's horrible Sarah, are there any questions in the uh, i see comments like a lot of women uh I uh, I'm really happy to hear you die. <laughs> you you can you. watch them later if you want. Um I I can't see any questions really. Um Yeah. Well, what you said uh, uh die it's it was really really insightful and you know, I think that lots of women who listened Will be, yeah, will be inspired by you, and um, yeah, um, amazing. Thank you so much um, for for being here with us, and uh, yeah, you're an ama amazing warrior woman. <laughs> wow, thank you very much. Coming from you, Leanne, um, I'm just going to see that photo of you forevermore. <laughs> just saying, right. But no, look, thank you. And like it it I'm I'm so grateful that you've you've um seen me and, and highlighted me um because it, obviously it would be ace if I got some more business um for when I'm ready. Um but obviously as well because I there really is a business here. Um so if you've got the skills and you've got the tools and you 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 want to work for yourself um and help other women crack on just don't do it near me that's all <laughs> <laughs> not too close that was, that was a good ending <laughs> cool. thank you
Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.